somewhere about, you know, early February, the fish are starting to spawn down here in South Florida. We're on Okeechobee. Once that water warms up, it's 72 degrees. Once it gets around 75, they should pull up pretty good on them beds. Um, give it a couple hours. You know, with this heat like this, it won't take long for that water to warm up. To try to find really good bottom for spawning fish, I use my power poles to listen for either the sand or rock hard bottom. You can hear a dragon like that. There is no mud right there. If there is, it's just a little bit. But it's got some good spawning bottom right here. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna work this flat out right here in this little bay and pick apart little isolated stuff, isolated clumps of, you know, lily pads or the, these little clumps of uh, needle grass. Anything, try to figure out where these fish are located. Either they're gonna be in the pockets, but most likely they're gonna be around something isolated. They'll be spawning around the base of it. Try to throw around a frog, do the chatterbait deal, and um, run a Cinco, cover some water. Typically, what I'd try to look for on, you know, spawning flats is good bottom, good cover, and water clarity. These fish, you know, need sunlight, for, you know, to incubate their, their eggs, so they got to have the sunlight. Uh, you put them three things together, you're going to have spawners in that area. So. What I'm doing, this, this is a pretty much a whole, uh, the whole area right here, this whole bay is a spawning area. But these fish, they, they spawn in schools. So what I'm trying to say is like this whole bay right here is pretty much all the same. But you can, I use this chatterbait to cover water. And if I get a couple bites in one spot, I can power pull down and then work that spot out with a worm or something. You know, slow down and then just pick it apart. A lot of times these, these Females love to get on the base of these cattail root systems. I like those cattails because they're all by their lonesome out there. They're not choked up with lily pads or anything. So I'll cast a cinco by them or throw that frog around them. You know, anything that's isolated like that normally holds the fish. You can pretty much pinpoint your fish when it's in an open area like this. I'll try to work out every single cattail clump in this, this, this little area right here. If they're spawning here, this is, this is where they'll be. They don't have a bunch of shade from all the lily pads around them, so they get plenty of sunlight, you know, for doing their spawn. I just worked this whole area out, didn't get any bites. Not saying they're not here, but I'm, I'm moving on, and I'm gonna look for different types of cover. Maybe they're not hanging on this. Now I see on this stretch, there's isolated clumps of lily pads, like two and three in a clump. And it's not just a big field of them. I'm gonna work my way with a chatterbait through there and then just work this back bay. There might be you know isolated clumps of needle grass. Just, just working my way through here until I find something they're hanging on. There's one, finally. Not oh, bad little fish, a little buck. Female's gotta be somewhere. So what I just did, I moved on the outside of this bay where the water gets a little bit deeper on this edge. Figured they might, you know, pushed out, you know, depends on what the weather was doing, you know, the last couple of days. So they might be sitting on this edge, and I had one bite here and just caught one there, so I think we're on to something right now. So normally what I'll do, I'll throw right back in the same spot and see if I can get a female. But if you, if you don't, you just keep working on, you catch a couple males and no females through there, don't get discouraged. You can come back later in the day as the water temperature warms up, and then the females will pull up and try to do their thing, and they can dump their eggs and then be more active and, you know, wanting a, you know, reaction bay or you know, anything, you know, they'll be more active on trying to eat something near their bed. Another thing that I try to preach on frog fishing is do not jump the gun. You get a bite, don't get too excited and set the hook as soon as they blow up on it. I like to, you know, just like a worm fishing, they come and eat it and just reel down nice and slow and feel them and set into them. 
because you lose a lot of fish, it seems like, with a frog if you don't let them eat it. So you can almost tell where the little bit deeper water is when you're fishing these heavy pads, is the pads will be a lot thicker and taller looking. And you can see like out there, there's a, they're, they're sparse, they're a little low. It's probably a little bit shallow right there, but on this edge, you can tell, mostly on edges, you can tell where the deep water is. And a lot of times, especially in the summertime, them fish love to get right on that in them deeper pads because the water's, you know, shade from the pads and the water's a little bit deeper. It might be only six inches deeper, but that's, you know, that's a key to where you're going to catch, you know, the bigger fish. There's one. Little, little guy, still fish. I've caught one on the Texas rig and one on a frog, but they've been on the outer side pad. So and I'm starting to narrow things down. Covering water with the, you know, the fast moving reaction baits and then you know, slowing down with the Texas rig and you know, just bouncing back and forth trying to locate these fish. So we uh, fished a little bit this morning, trying to find some fish. Things weren't working out. Caught a couple of little ones here and there. Uh, we're gonna change it up a little bit, heading on across the lake. Uh, I'm gonna go over a couple rods with you real quick. Um, so I'm using this uh, Meta 7.3 Heavy. I use it for a frog rod, obviously you can see it there. And a 7.3-1 gear ratio uh, Inception G2. And this is the, my pick of gear ratio with the rhythm of me popping a frog. Just It just rolls out just perfect. And I, you know, I got it spooled with 65 pound uh, suffix braid with a spro frog with an upgraded four aught hook from Gamagatsu. Other than that, you know, it's got the right amount of action, right tip to it. You know, this is what I use here in South Florida for, you know, a frog rod. So I'm gonna go over with this, this chatterbait rod. You know, there is a glass rod I like to use, but also I like to use this rod right here. Um, it's a 7.4 medium heavy. Uh, it's just, it's not like your normal medium heavy. This thing's got some nice flex. It loads up all the way. I'm using a, uh, a lower gear ratio of 5.3 to 1, Inception G2, you know, obviously I've been running these things for a little bit now. And I got a half ounce chatterbait jackhammer, black and blue, with a Gambler Komodo black and blue trailer. So I like to spool my chatterbait rod up with 20 pound 100% fluorocarbon suffix. This is my brand I like to pick. Just run around the heavy cover and the water's clear. Sometimes I go from braid to fluorocarbon, but this the today and the way the water's been, I like to use the fluorocarbon. This is my Texas rig setup. I'm using a 7.3 Heavy. I'm running a, uh, a VMC extra wide gap 4 uh, he extra heavy cover with a 5.16 tungsten weight with 20 pound fluorocarbon. And I got it rigged with a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio Inception G2. And so when I'm using this Texas rig, either I can use it for, you know, speed worm, or I can use it for the, you know, obviously a fat ace, Cinco, you know, picking out isolated cover or pockets, you know, just slow worming, trying to pick things apart. This is my setup I like to use. So we came up here to the north end of the lake. So these, there's a couple good pockets up on the north end that's protected by the wind and stuff. So you can actually see there's a wind current coming, pushing water back up in here. Uh, there's spawning areas, like this is probably just an open area with a little bit of high drill and stuff. We got dollar pads, you know, clumps of cattails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the edges of these cattails, you know, then go venture over to the, like these pad flats. We tried the canal this, this morning and now we're trying the, the lakeside. Come here, buddy. I don't know if it's male or female. Ain't pissing, so. Might be a post fish. 
I think she was just staging right there on the edge of them cattails. Yeah, she didn't really crush it. She just, just sucked it down. I like to work my frog multiple different ways. You know, if I know they're really chewing, I like to try to cover a lot of water. I'll do a three pop stop. Or if, I, if they're not biting that good, I do one pop, let it soak. And then sometimes I'll let it soak for a, a while. So you might be working it, working it too fast and just going right over fish that are not that active. <clears throat> That's why we use 65 pound test to get them out of there. Another nice fish. <laughs> See? Just another male. Them females gotta be around here somewhere. That's one of them females. We started off this morning, you know, in the canal system, fishing some bays, started in the back, worked our way out to the outside edge next to the canal. Then we worked out here to this, uh, moved to the lake, the big water, and, you know, started hitting these spawning flats out here with a frog, and pretty much, you know, can't really put it down, you know? Things are happening with this frog, there's no sense of trying anything else if they're eating this frog. That's what we're looking for right there. Caught the female. They're definitely doing their thing right now. 